Greetings in the name of the Most High. Hello to you, WWCR, 13845 megahertz on the dial, and we are back. This is Zeph Daniel. This is the Zeph Report Live, or Z Live, uh, first hour. We're going to have a little talk about the world, as it were. I was just spending time in Matthew 24, and, you know, revisiting a well-worn scripture. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you don't not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is still not yet. For I put in the word still just there. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated for all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure to the end... The same shall be saved. Endure hatred, affliction, unfair, um, you know, execution, not based on justice, but say political purposes or, you know, you have a Bible and and, uh, Islamic people kill you for it. You should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, there's a key here. Hated of all nations means basically that Jesus is illegal in all nations. The United States is collapsing. The uh, new economy of Obama, his idea was to destroy the economy. So he has a worse situation now than 08 created completely by himself, his State Department, his economic advisors have done all they could to destroy the economy, to prevent the recovery so that they could bring in a solution that other otherwise people would not accept. That is a a global governance, um, or at least the beginning of of a new way of doing things, a new deal, if you will, a new currency, a new um, way based on uh, wealth of a few and poverty of many, uh, all working for the man. So that's the the thing he's done. He has also put his precious black community out of work to the tune of 37% unemployment, the highest rate in the history, I think, ever in this country. Um, And he has done that to the black community because you see with him, the end justifies the means. I mean, we've been saying this and he's been doing Everything that we have predicted here, Obama and his administration have done. And as I said, he doesn't care about the blacks. He doesn't care about, um, you know, brown people, black people. Color Color is just used to get him elected. But he is not uh, a man of color. He is a very high-end Mason. He is a, uh, he is considered royalty both on the Brit side and in Africa. And um, the, everyone else is just the little people, you know, blacks, whites. It doesn't matter what color you are. That's not the issue that drives him. He's uh, an elite, bringing about an elite solution that otherwise people wouldn't bring. Still, there's around 50% of the population that believes that Obama is a job creator, though he's never created a job. Um, that kind of mind control is um, key to the solution for the new world order. That kind of mind control is key to the godless, Christless world where when it says Christ will be hated, I mean, what flashed at me was, yeah, Jesus, the Bible, etc., all that will be illegal. Why? Because the new world order is based on satanic conformity, which is, you know, already what most of our secular world is already based on. 
and unfortunately the 501c3 churches have all gone along with it and uh this is the why the reason that god will destroy america within the next few years it won't be here and the reason why is something will be here but i mean it won't be america and the reason that's being allowed to happen is because um when one conforms to the world system or the secular world one is in hatred of christ or yahweh or god's way if you like so that would mean hated so those who don't conform to and they're going to throw you know maybe some world religion or islam or something at people to get them into systems you know into gatherings into groups into systems where they can then be dealt with and categorized and cataloged because every soul, as you may already know, every soul is counted and it is part and parcel of a marketplace. And these souls are then, as it says in the book of Revelation, they're traded, much like any other good is traded. But they have to be categorized, cataloged, and um, a dossier has to be written about that person to keep track in the marketplace, which is a, actually a higher dimensional, fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional, etc., thing that happens. Um, but those souls cannot be taken unless and until the free will of the person is engaged and says, yes, I reject God, I accept you, and then corrupts himself and whatever, I don't know, kills somebody, does some sexual act, some perversion, whatever, whatever it is they want, you know, jump through this hoop, or, you know, an initiation rite of some sort. It, which is irrelevant, actually, but because what's relevant is the heart, is the decision to join, I'm with you guys, you know, take care of me because I want to make money. And really that ends up being, okay, putting that soul on the marketplace. And that's usually taken from the person. What's replaced is the hive mind over soul. And what's left of that person is a tape recording, what that personality used to be. But it's really under control of a uh, centralized... Uh, control mechanism okay so all of that would constitute hatred of jesus christ as spoken in matthew 24 hatred would be institutionalized meaning not necessarily the bible not you know fellowship not it's nothing like that it's more hatred of christ likeness or a hatred of the way, or hatred of truth, which is an individual matter, which can only be really assessed by having control of that person in a laboratory situation where you're able to make a determination whether that person has gone through to the other side or not, whether that soul is thus, therefore, uh, available or not in the intergalactic marketplace of souls. So that's what you have going on in a, um, you know, part and parcel with conformity is the whole alien question. I know that sounds weird, but uh, that's all part and parcel of it. I mean, you know, most people that will tell you, <clears throat> well, they won't talk, first of all. People that go through, they don't talk um, because they're scared, you know, that they'll be killed or whatever. So, but most of these people know the alien question you know, the little demons, the little greys and all that, they're all part and parcel with this soul scalping operation that I've been describing, which is also described in Matthew 24 as hatred of Christ. Soul scalping is hatred of Christ, but the individual needs to give it up in order to have a position in the world. But he has given up Christ, not his um, pride, not his sex, not his perversion, or whatever else it is, which is all just stupid. But he's given up his soul, or Christ, and then that's one more bites of dust, which, which, when it becomes institutionalized, i.e. everyone who graduates college, for example, everyone in a fraternity, everyone in a sorority, everybody in, a, in the Rotary Club, everyone, you know what I mean? Once it gets to that point, the nation is then become Sodom and Gomorrah, let's say. Uh, in other words, it has become hatred of Christ, and once it becomes hatred of Christ, there's no point for God to let it live any longer. Now, there may be some sort of respite. You know, we're, we're talking prophetically, geopolitically, and, and quite crazily, and if anyone hears this outside, just this little fellowship of you and me, they're going to think I'm stark raving mad, and I really could care less, you know? 
Um, the point being, you need to assess how many people in America have gone through to that other side. Well, most Christians have. They go first. Um, that's the policy in churches if you want to become a member. And youth group, they really push it hard. So I, I don't know why they say they're church. But, you know, this whole thing of deception, I mean, they're not fooling anybody, right? People that know the truth already know that. Um, but this was another way of infiltration using the churches to infiltrate using, um, you know, secular clubs, men's clubs, women's clubs, uh, boys clubs, this club, that club, boy scouts, even, uh, universities, uh, you know, all the secular world is used for one purpose. And that is to scalp the souls of people so that they're <clears throat> available on the open market and, the people are kind of like in a nation like America. I look at the people like cattle. They're just sitting there chewing their cud. They have no no clue um, that what they did <laughs> basically, you know, made them cattle, made them chattel, made them slaves. And that um, they're awaiting execution. And many of these go to churches and read the Bible and, you know, do this and that. And it doesn't really matter. They're, they're still going to the same place. And uh, I've tried to warn them. Uh, over the years, and as, as my calling to do, is to cut through all the BS, go right to the heart of the matter. But unfortunately, um, it, it's not Satan that shows up who then defends his system and tries to be like a lawyer or whatever, because I have the argument that can't be broken. Um, it's them, the individual who already sold his soul, who's then defending himself <laughs> while his soul has already been sold. Well, he has no way back. And he's defending his own execution, saying that it's for the greater good and I needed money or whatever. That it was worth it. And then mocking me or people like me for good measure for speaking the truth of the subject. Now, God won't let it be all, but he, he lets it go a pretty long time because he'll let it go to where he, the whole city is taken out. He'll let it go to where all of America you know, is taken out and replaced, which is coming up. He'll let it go to where, um, you know, where people will think, oh, no, we'll never die, blah, blah, blah. And he'll take out the Roman Empire, this empire, the Hittite Empire, the, you know, Geng Genghis Khan will have his, you know, day, you know, Napoleon meets his Waterloo. I mean, too big to fail fails. Uh, you, you know, the Titanic sinks. I mean, you know, always these guys are wrong. And always when they're trying to tell you to sell your soul, the problem is, is that once you, you sold it, they just say, sucker, get in line. Sucker, get in line. You know, you idiot, get in line. I mean, they know what happened. But the people in denial won't admit it. They're going to double down on defending their position. And their position is not tenable. I mean, yeah, they might, you know, and even now with this second recession and, um, as I said, the black community at the highest rate of unemployment ever since Obama. I find that very ironic. I mean, that should tell you something that, you know, the goal is to destroy each and every person to get it right down to the nub and, um, you know, exact as much pain and punishment as possible on the human population because Obama and his people are angry and they want to kill people. They want to hurt people. They want to destroy lives. They want to destroy business. They want to destroy everything they touch. And that's his raison d'etre. He hates America, hates Americans and wants them all punished, including black people. So that's what he's done, and we predicted it, and he's done it exactly as predicted with no delay. In other words, prophetic utterances regarding Obama have been swift and fulfilled with no delay. Right on cue. So he will continue with what little time he has left. Probably they will elect a Rick Perry or somebody like that, but while he has time left, uh, he will, you know, do as much damage as possible so that he leaves as much destruction in his wake and hopefully enough destruction so that America could never recover. And then he will feel like his job has been done and he could care less about being reelected. He's already an elite. He's already a millionaire. He's already one of them. He's royalty. He doesn't need to be president. 
<laughs> people here are idiots. I total amazing, complete, utter fools that you talk to in America. I mean, just on the, the man in the street is an utter fool. You know, they used to be the American in the street knew something. They don't know anything. They don't know their own names, pretty much. I mean, they basically are miseducated, diseducated, uneducated, and have no clue why they exist, why they breathe, why they walk around. And uh, they're just there to eat, poop, and um, fornicate and die. Right? There is no point. I tell you, friends, if you don't have a, you know, a reason to live, there is no point for you to walk around, you know, um, consuming and defecating and, you know, producing more children like you. I mean, what, what a waste that would be. If you have no idea what the purpose is, you fathers, what are you going to teach your sons that um, it's great to walk around and basically live in some idiotic existence without a clue and then die go to the game and then die go eat and stuff yourselves then die go to walmart and then die i mean what's the point but to go to work and then die to it's some useless job punching a time clock making some widget of some sort that has no immediate uh you know well those jobs have all been taken away but i'm just saying if that's what you were doing what was the point to go buy a bigger truck, to get a, oh, now they've taken the gas away, they're taking everything away, so could there be a revival? I don't know. You see, the soul scalping situation, i.e. hatred of Christ, where nation will rise against nation, and you will all be hated for Jesus Christ's name's sake, and they will afflict you and then kill you. But then hatred will rise and betrayal will arise and the hearts of many will wax cold in the death and destruction. So I guess the purpose will become betraying your neighbor, turning your neighbor in, hating your neighbor, death and destruction, everyone going to the gas chambers and don't say a word, keep mum. All in the name of getting a little trinket, of getting the approval of, you know, of getting something from the system rather than going directly to God for provision. The reason that people sell their souls is because they want money and security. They wind up with neither. They wind up with neither. But what happens is the nation goes that way. The hearts wax cold, meaning they are antichrist. And um, then, for example, in America, Jesus Christ and the name of Jesus Christ is hated institutionally across the board. And, and, and that's why the nation is now not only on life support, but on the last few years of its existence. And I said yesterday that I, d I did believe that uh, America would go by 2017. <clears throat> that's not a firm date. I don't believe in dates. But that's a date that came to me in the spirit. So by then it should all be wrapped up. And, you know, you'll either be dead or some sort of slave, you know, somewhere or, you know, in a pocket of resistance somewhere. But anyway, it's not good. It's not good. You, you, you have to understand, your fellow humans are against you and hate you. And will turn you in if you even look different than the way you're supposed to look. Okay? So all that is working as well. Because the main thing is now to collect all the souls, to scalp them, and to sell them in the open market. And um, the hosts who contain the souls are to be um, <clears throat> filled with the oversoul that will then tell them, you know, like a hive go left, go right, go straight. You see, that's what the Holy Spirit will do if you have Jesus Christ. If you have bowed down to Christ, then you, I guess you would be an overcomer. Uh, someone who has bowed down to Christ will not bow down to the world or do what he has to do to expand his ministry in Christianity, to expand his ministry, and so he can go to Africa and India and preach to the heathen to help them. Um... 
No, he won't be allowed to preach in the church. He won't be allowed to go to Africa or India. He won't be allowed to be on television. He will be rejected by the Salem Radio Network. <clears throat> I'm speaking from experience. No, I already knew that was the price. In other words, if you preach Christ and crucified and explain what it means, see, it falls short. If they preach Jesus and crucified, yes, but what does it mean? Let's get down to existence 101 then. What is the <clears throat> what is the purpose for your existence? To feel good. To stuff your fat belly. To um fulfill your sexual desires. To get lots of stuff and walk around worshiping it thinking Oh, how insulated I am with all this stuff. No one's going to get me. To build a big fort, to build a big business. What's your purpose? There is only one purpose to life. And, you know, there's not really two. I mean, you know, there's two choices, but one purpose. Purpose is uh, basically we're here for his purpose and to serve him. And that's all the same purpose and or rebel against him, and that's the other choice. There really isn't anything else. And I spoke about this all day yesterday. This is the reason nations will fall when people decide to become selfish, i.e. decadent, meaning, you know, they proclaim themselves, I am. They put themselves above God. They, put, they, they think their lives are important. And they're, you know, um, uh, and they run the wrong way a way that seems right to a man, and it leads to death, destruction, and hell for them, their children, and their ancestors to come uh, to live in bondage. You're here to do one thing and make a decision either for God or against God to serve him or not serve him because it, it the real purpose of existence is not a human purpose. It's God's purpose. You either align with that or you're out. And uh, the falling of nations, the second recession, which they never predicted, by the way. And all the things I've said about Obama, you have to understand, he's not consciously doing all these things. He's trying to fix stuff. He can't, but see, his spirit, his soul is doing it. And against the will of himself, he's conflicted because he doesn't know himself. He's he's uh, double-minded, if you will. He thinks he's doing good, but you see, he's actually doing the thing that is in his unconscious, his subconscious, is really the thing getting done. And <laughs> it's kind of complicated, but his handlers know all about it. Anyway, uh, the point is um, Satan's purpose, uh, you know, and that's who you serve. If you do not serve God, all of you then serve the devil, period. I don't care what you do, how your good works. If you do not serve God, you serve Satan. There is no in-between. A non-answer or a, a being agnostic means you serve Satan. A I don't know answer means you serve Satan. I'm not sure answer means you serve Satan. Am I making it pretty clear? Do you see why this message would not be welcome in a 501c3 church or on the Salem radio network? Why do you listen to the Salem Network and go to a 501c3 church then if the truth is not allowed to be preached there? Well, you have a problem then. Yeah, you have a real problem then. Your life is not your own then. Your mind is not your own then. A lot of people serve God... Um, They've never seen the inside of a church. They've never sat down a Bible study. They're there serving God. And I know that the uh, exterior conformed sort of uh, robotoid, uh, you know, human will look at a person like that and go, oh, that's that person needs to be church. They need to be Bible. They need to be churched or studied up in the Bible or something. And, um, you know, the person is there serving God. And who are you to say different? And they pray in the name of Jesus. 
you know, they learn, they're taught through the Spirit. Eventually they get a Bible. Eventually they figure out more because the Bible is a path to truth. It has um, a lot in it. But look, the whole point I'm trying to make is that um, there is only one truth, one way, one gospel, one baptism, uh, one thing going on here, and not two. And I tried to explain this yesterday in great detail, and I'm doubling down on it today because apparently people don't seem to understand. If you're here serving God, then that means you're overcoming, i.e. Revelation chapter 1 and 2. If you're an overcomer, i.e. Revelation chapter 1 and 2, then that means you don't bow down to the devil for prov provision, meaning, and it doesn't mean you don't get a paycheck. It doesn't mean someone doesn't give you a gift. It doesn't mean you don't inherit, uh, you know, um, inheritance. It doesn't mean any of those things. It doesn't mean someone doesn't contribute to your ministry or, you know, pay you or whatever. What it means is you don't bow down to Satan. Does that make sense? doesn't mean you're not rich, poor, middle, it doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with it. What matters is, are you bowing down to Satan for that provision? Yes or no? If you're not, then God is providing it through other people who may be Satanists, you know, who may be evil. That's okay. You're not bowing down. You're overcoming. And believe me, that... You know, all of this provision and all of this, you know, having a roof over your head and all those things, um, basically that's the Lord's job. Satan gives and then takes it away. I mean, the Lord gives and takes it away to people who rebel, rebel but Satan takes it away for no reason. He promises you the moon, promises you being a rock star, uh, a great programmer, a great, you know, CEO, a great whatever it is your dream is, okay? He promises you that and then he doesn't deliver. It's like 0.01% get that. And those are people who will do the most good in recruiting other people to say, you see, this is an awfully nice world. And let's, you know, and it's not Satan's world, but he's usurped it for now. And people are convinced that going with him is the way to go. I think I get more inroads now with the truth than I did a few years ago. Now with this double dip recession, that's really, that's really a, a big boon for us. We do well in times like that. And the reason we do well in times like that is because there are people that are finally willing to stop it. I can't tell you how many people have rejected me online. Um, I've been rejected by just about everybody in online, supposedly non-501c3 breakaway ministries. They will not put me on the airwave. And I'm like, wow. Now, here's a person that's in poverty, in lack, and they still won't go with the truth. Still, they're going to have this sort of ecumenical view of, um, of God. You know, they're going to have this idea that it's okay to be sort of conformed, but you're doing all this good work. Or some twisted thing to make, you know, left and right foot both. It, it's to straddle this line. Um and someone asked me if so-and-so was for real. I said, no, of course not. <laughs> then I never saw them again. You know, you know, then I was defriended, right? They would ask me if this one's for real, if that one's for real. And I tell them my honest opinion. You know, I'm not judging the person. I'm giving an opinion uh, based on um, the spirit, whether a person is, you know, really my brother or not. And I, it's a subjective, I, I suppose, but uh, one must try the spirits, you know. Um, is it possible that you would have a state of non-brotherhood with people who are equally yoked or people on the same page? No, you'd have the same state of brotherhood with them and be in agreement with them. In general, I mean, not on every little thing, but I mean, you'd be there'd be a certain familial uh, connection. And so when there isn't that, you, you have to wonder... I don't go, well, is there something wrong with me? Because I've realized there isn't anything wrong with me, you know. If there were something wrong with me, then I suppose in terms of being connected to the Almighty One and, and doing it the way He wants. If I was connected to the world in some way, um, 
And that doesn't mean I don't have hooks in me from the world and snares and, and thorns in my side. I sure do. I got a lot of that. And I've had hooks too where people were draining my energy and this and that. I had an open door here, an open door there. And I have to close those. You know, I have to repent on that stuff. But in general, in the main, you know, that you can't pull the punches. You gotta, you, you've got to say the truth. And if you can say the truth, um, in other words, like a friend of mine said, you know, you cross a line, they won't cross. But then my feeling is, well, if they don't cross it, they're not bros. And what's the line? It's about the whole conformianity thing, which unfortunately America bought hook, line, and sinker. So did Canada and Europe and, you know, all the civilized nations. And that's why the civilized nations are going to rise up against each other or collapse or have a big world war or something. At the end of the day, you're either going to trust the Lord or trust the world. You can't have it both ways. And a non-choice is a choice for Satan. And that's just the way it is. You can call Yahweh harsh, mean, evil, and a lot of people have because it's not the natural way of a man. Yes, there's prostitutes and brothels who belong to Jesus. Absolutely. There's priests that belong to the devil. Absolutely. I mean, this should not be some kind of mystery. This should be well taught, well understood by all people. If you have been initiated into the satanic side, you need to then um, not only dedicate your life to Jesus, but separate from all the people that have vetted you and support you. Change your name, change your identity if you have to. Go live somewhere else. You need to start over and repent to the Lord and go another direction. I mean, you can, you can, I guess, suppose live there, and but you can't be friends with them. If you try to be a friend with a scorpion or a snake, what do you think is going to happen? If you're friends with people on the other side and you're not over there participating, what do you think they're going to do with you? Okay, first of all, they're not going to be honest with you. Second of all, they're going to be playing a game to lure you in into a trap and then they're going to do something to you. They could get rid of you. They could re-up you. They could do all kinds of things, but they're not going to be like on an even playing field because that's not the nature people in Satan have to do for Satan. And if they don't, they're punished. So you would then be a target. So you can't really be friends with people that are going to target you. Now, can you? You can't really go to that high school reunion. Now, can you? You can't really go to that um, family uh, turkey Thanksgiving dinner. Now, can you? Not really. I mean, you know, you can go, but it would be an extreme exercise in spiritual warfare trying to get out of there intact. And it may be against God's will completely. That's why he gives many of us a new name, a new path, a new new friends, new new this, new that. Because there's no way to stay with the old because it, it's impossible. No man can stand against the satanic system. Only God can. And isn't that the point? We have to fully rely on him in order to get through it. We have to fully rely on him in order to accomplish. We have to fully rely on him in order to succeed in what? Overcoming what? This world which is run by Satan with the whole point of which is to scalp your soul and then sell it. Meaning you're in what? Hell. Hell. Well, Jesus talked about hell. Yeah, he preached hell a lot. He said, don't fear the guy that can, you know, kill your body. Fear the guy that can kill your body and your soul. Fear the guy that can throw that soul into hell. Fear the person that can then, you know, because hell is, like it says in the book of Daniel, you know, you're either resurrected to everlasting punishment and shame or everlasting uh, glory like the stars in the heavens, you know, one or the other, you're not, it's not like you're going to be able to walk the religious walk and then think that the Lord won't be doing Matthew seven on your head going, uh, you're saying, Lord, Lord, he says, depart from me, you who work iniquity. What's work iniquity mean? Work iniquity in that verse of Matthew seven, uh, 21, 22, 23, et cetera. Work iniquity, or was it seven twenty four, seven twenty three, whatever. Work iniquity means, um, those who are conformed to the satanic system. They work iniquity. In other words, it works. It's like a system 
but it's based on iniquity. In other words, Satan's world system is based on the work of iniquity. The work of the Spirit of the Lord of Righteousness means connection to God Yahweh, the Godhead. Um, if one is connected to the world, they cannot be connected to the Godhead, so therefore their works are foul and evil, even if they're charitable. It doesn't really matter. They're seen as filthy rags to the Lord because he's really, it's not about the works. It's about souls and, you know, it's about um, a test for each soul and it's about overcoming and there really isn't anything else going on on earth. I mean, man can go ahead and build his towers and airplanes and, you know, tin cans to fly around in and whatnot, have his technology and try to venture the stars. Now, the, the, the transhumanism is another thing God hates. And I can tell you this, once you get to transhumanism, just go back into Genesis 6 and start reading about what happened to the to the uh, uh, transhumanists going on back in those days, the genetic experimentation. Just take a look at what happened in the days of Noah. When it says it's going to be like the days of Noah in the Bible, you know, in Matthew 24, it is talking about, you know, the days of hybridization. These are the days of hybrids, GMO foods, and all the experiments to create some kind of a being and, you know, to download one's consciousness, transplant one's brain, to extend life in human terms so that the aliens that you see just become like an extension. In other words, it's like the humans from the past who went into the future coming back to further try to tweak the human genome to fix it so they can all be happy, which they never will be, because they're stuck in this time-space continuum and they can't really go into all the various dimensions and all the aspects of God's kingdom they're stuck, like almost like being stuck in an astral plane. So, you know, yeah, they have their ships they fly around in. They have uh, their theology, which is usually Jesus is a lie, Jesus is fake, the kind of the whole zeitgeist thing, the kind of Alan Watt thing, Jordan Maxwell, you know, that Alex Jones was promoting, you know, which, which then pretty much sidelines these people as to figuring it out. It's not about figuring out the conspiracy, how evil the government is, or... You know, how evil, yeah, they kill, they eat children, they have sex with them, they have a global pedophile satanic network, they do human sacrifices, wars become that, they do terrorist attacks, they do all these things, and it's all orchestrated and all coming from that one side that people conform to. See the problem? Connect to. See the problem? You connect so that you can make money, but the people paying you are the people doing all the things you're complaining about. Get it? You can't live unless you have Christ. Get it? Without Jesus Christ, you can't make it. Get it? Well, I'm glad somebody is awake around here. And how are you doing? Oh, you're hunkered down in your apartment. And um, they're gang stalking you. They're following you around. Well, here's your problem. You you can't idolat you know, it's idolatry to think of the gang stalker as the winner. You have to think of the gang stalker as basically persecution. And when you put it into that category, i.e. they will afflict you, i.e. gang stalk you, Matthew twenty four, then you don't have to put your focus on them or videotaping them or trying to catch them. Simp look, they're just Satanists. Just put your Focus on the Lord and let him deal with them. And he will give you the desires of your heart to be free of them, and he will do that. I mean, there's always going to be, you know, ignorant people around getting together to, you know, wait for human blood, uh, the, to have a collective spoil over that human sacrifice or getting literally someone's money or doing something to that effect and having a collective purse. That's Proverbs 1, okay? Go back and read that. That's your gang stalking 101, okay? So there's nothing new here under the sun. Gang stalking certainly isn't anything new. It's simply the hive mind coming at you in the form of other people of, who are grouped together to then surveil you and stalk you and, and you know, uh, try to get you to kill yourself or whatever because they don't, they're not going to kill you. But if they can get you to kill yourself or degrade you at, and just get control of you, that's what they, they really are. I mean, I've got, you know, letters from people, especially, you know, the women who have been gang stalked that didn't know what to do and what's happened with them 
in some cases is they become in a way slaves of the stalkers and they, you know, they get hunkered down in an apartment and pretty soon infiltrated and then, you know, sexualized or raped and then, you know, sold into prostitution or something like awful happens. Human trafficking also plays into this. And, you know, there's no manner of Satan's kingdom that doesn't come to bear in this thing. The gang stalking is basically Satan's army on earth. There's also mobbing going on now. That is infiltration of uh, stores by these people. There's um, the gang stalking, which a lot of the gang stalking has a sexual component, i.e. to, you know, eventually infiltrate and try to um, get control of people for the purpose of, of sex. But then it then takes on a more nefarious purpose, that, you know, you know uh, and it can even get to the point of... Um, getting control of people and then programming them, but that's kind of another wing of the uh, military. But again, it kind of goes with the same thing of, you know, voice to skull, using technology, getting control of that victim or that target, then getting the target to do things he otherwise wouldn't do um, as a form of social control. But then that all goes to a greater spiritual reality that there's someone telling those stalkers what to do. They are themselves slaves. Understand that. They have no choice but to do what they're doing. And the hierarchy goes straight up the pyramid to Satan. And there is no other way of looking at it. The gang stalkers, that, uh, the gang stalking victims, the TIs, the targeted individuals who meet and have group therapy and, and talk about how awful it is, are really um, deluding themselves because there's no way to solve it in group therapy because it's not a group problem. It may help to comfort them. I'm not discouraging getting together in groups and talking about human trafficking and, you know, gang stalking and surveillance and, and high-tech uh, uh, electronic warfare and psychotronic warfare. I'm not saying don't get together and say how awful it is. I am saying that the source of it is a supernatural source and must be dealt with by a supernatural solution, i.e. God, Yahweh, Yahweh, can solve this problem if a person puts their trust in him and really trusts it with faith and walks out in that way. Otherwise, um, just meeting about it isn't going to do anything. It hasn't done anything in thousands of years. It's not, you know, it may give you temporary comfort, but it is not going to solve the problem. Most people I know who follow Jesus for real, who are overcomers, are TIs also. In fact, I'd say that's true of 90% of the, of the people that I talk to and the letters I get are people that f are for real with Christ and they are stocked, but here's what it says. Okay? So that you don't marvel, my brethren. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and shall betray one another, and they'll sh they shall hate one another. And many false prophets will rise and deceive many. And iniquity will abound, and the love of many will wax cold. Any questions about that? In that, you can just put your gang stocking in there as part of that. But let's go on, shall we? How much more time do I have? Oh, wow. Okay, perfect. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Very important, that word witness there. And then shall the end come. The people who are here that are intact are the witness of the God's glory and God's moving. And we need to be intact to be witnesses of it. Otherwise, you'd be blind to it. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet... Stand in the holy place, and who, whoever is reading this, let him understand. And let them which are in Judah flee to the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that when your flight not be in winter, neither in the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. For the elect's sake those days will be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, there, believe it not. For there shall arise many false Christs, false prophets, 
She also show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Of course, that's not possible. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall uh, uh, say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, don't go into the desert. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, do not believe that. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever, wheresoever the carcass is, there will eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And I would just uh, refer also to the photon belt aspect of going into this is part of a cycle where um, we go from dark to light to, to all light to, to actually the kingdom on earth. But it's also a cosmological event that involves planets and sun and stars. And there shall appear in the, in, in the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Yeah, uh-huh. And shall the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. That's right, a new paradigm, new dimension, a new physics comes in. And he shall send with his angels a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. In other words, all you who are hunkered down will be brought together. Now, you know, individually will be brought together. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When the branch is yet tender, it puts forth the leaves. You know, the summer is nigh. But likewise, when you shall see these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things are fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words may not pass away. That's right, heaven and earth. Again, a new dimension. You don't have the heaven and earth, i.e. light and dark. You have all light, right? It's, the, it's like the new Jerusalem. Okay, but heaven and earth, meaning the sky and the stars and the moon, the system we have, fades away. There's another dimension that is Christ that comes. Um, but as to the hour and the, the day, no man, no, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only knows. But as the days of Noah were, so, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, there were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, until the day uh, Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He will gather his own together from the four corners of the earth, like Noah in the ark, and they shall be saved, and they shall be together, and they shall witness all of this, but humanity, much of it will perish in that day over that short three day, it's like a three day period or um, anyway, then shall be uh, one in the field, one shall be taken, the other left, two women shall be grinding at the mill, one taken, the other left. A lot of people think that's the rapture. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord comes, but know this, that if the grand, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man will come. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the Lord hath made a ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is he is that servant, whom his Lord, uh, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods, but if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in that day when he looketh not for him, and in that hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and then it ends. I had to do a kind of a quick reading there for commentary. The point of it all is that there is weeping and gnashing of teeth um, and great sorrow because the earth goes through a great tribulation, a cosmological tribulation, a changing of the dimension from dark and light, good versus evil and so forth, to light. This is the interpretation that I am giving you. The dimension change, the coming of the Son of Man is dimensional sign in the heavens as well as the moon turns to blood. The stars fall from the sky. Everything goes dark for a little while. And then 
um, the end of this system comes and a new system begins. And this, and you know, many will perish. Uh, many will, will, will perish from fear. Many will perish from just um, not being protected by the Lord. But the Lord will establish his kingdom here through the dimensions, through cosmological changes. And those who are preserved, are in Christ, will be gathered together to be a witness unto the change the Lord made and to the change the earth goes through and to the justice. But as in the days of Noah, i.e. ergo some many will perish in the flood, which won't be a flood this time, but many will perish like in the days of Noah. But those who are the elect will be gathered together because uh, as in the days of Noah, into the ark. But the ark this time is the ark of the Lord, which is a supernatural protection that occurs so that these people will be a witness unto this. And if, you, you know, you can say rapture all you want, but I mean, this is a little bit bigger than, you know, this is a huge um, <clears throat> tableau that I am painting here, a huge mural for you to look at. Those who are the Lord's will be supernaturally protected to not only be a witness, but to populate the earth after this change and to populate this other dimension, which basically is a third, fourth, fifth, sixth dimension, dimensional existence, which is uh, opening up consciousness, opening up the uh, floodgates of you know potential glorified uh, beings that can uh, are interdimensional themselves, that can appear in many places at once. Uh, where death is not really um, part of it. But, but the old world has to die. Anything that is sown to the world then must perish away. So Jesus is not talking about hell here as he has before. He's talking about them perishing. He's talking about the world perishing as it was in the days of Noah. The world perished. And then there was a new world after the flood. Well, this new world is anything like the 3D world of Noah. This world is a, uh, you know, if you like, if you're into dimensions, I guess a fifth dimensional reality or greater, a world of light, of Christ, which is light. This is, um, you know, an illusion or a, 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 a pointing or a metaphorical kind of a way of explaining the cosmological shift that is the coming of Christ. God is in you. Christ is in you. Therefore, you'll be protected from within by Christ in this other dimension. That being said, you will... Um, be very grateful and flourish and you will live. And those who rejected God and rejected the way and rejected faith will not be there. You will witness an end to the old and you will remember it as a witness. Be able to teach your children what happened as a cautionary tale, not to ever go there again. But you see, when this world came in, it was a dimensional shift as well. And when the world goes out, I mean, it's already written <clears throat> as to the cycle, as to when people can read the Bible to try to determine these cycles and try to determine when exactly this will happen. Um, suffice to say, the situation, the way we have, like, for example, this whole thing about the photon belt back in the 90s, was this idea of going into the 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 um, uh, getting into the influence of uh, of, of uh, various uh, star systems and the Milky Way, which brings us into the photon belt, which is a belt of light, meaning it's constant light. Uh, it, it's also another dimension of light where there is no darkness. There's not day and night. There's just light. Okay, and it's um it's a dimensional shift as well as a uh, light versus dark, you know, the 3D dimension we're in is a cosmological dimension we find ourselves in. There would be a shift to higher octaves of dimensions in this realm of light, which can be likened to the kingdom of God, if you like. But you have to glean that. I mean, that's an interpretation. You know, it kind of gets away from the Jack Chick sort of, you know, um, 
uh, comic book interpretation of, you know, what's to be after. Uh, it goes into a cosmological explanation of the changes and what one must do to overcome or survive those changes and to be a, a living being in that dimension. See, a lot of people won't make it because they won't be able to comprehend what's happening to them. They won't be able to go with it, so they will perish. Because if you go from a third dimensional being, being, you know, flesh and blood and so forth, then you are a fifth dimensional, sixth dimensional, higher octave being. You've gone from, you know, density in, in blood and guts and so forth to light. <laughs> that's, that's kind of incredible, you know. I mean, and the whole world goes through that same change. Not everyone will be able to go with it. Only those really in Christ or those with God or those who have given their lives over to the Spirit will be able to really comprehend it and go with it. A lot of these people will just perish just due to not understanding it. And there'll be many there that will um, that will appear that you'll go, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were brethren. Oh, welcome, you know. Whoever exists in that day will be the testimony of the Lord saying, these people were the overcomers, these people exist, these people I have chosen, These are, this, is, this is my people Israel, these are the people of Zion, this is Zion, uh, you know, you made it, congratulations, and, and on we go. So it's a little bit different than this boring version of heaven, isn't it? This whole existence goes on. And all the all the complexities of it become even more complex, t- ten times more complex, but ten times more simple at the same time. Your bodies are glorified, meaning they don't have an age, you know, thing on them. And then where you go from there is really going to be kind of up to you. I mean, you know, if uh, you, you just, um, you know, God made you to flow, to to delight in you. He He made you to delight in your progress, to delight in your playing in his, the fields of the Lord. He wants to see you do what you want to do. He really does. But if what you want to do is to hurt people and to hate people and, and, and to you know hate God and to do your own thing at the expense of everybody else, I don't think he wants to watch that. You know, he's not really into that. And now I see I'm running out of time. These, this hour went so fast. You're going to have to stay tuned for Zine, Frankie, and Trish. We're going to be there to kind of tear it up. I, I do believe that this, you know, call in. Uh, you can Skype me at Metazef or you can Skype me at uh, 505-908-9189, 505-908-9189. Chime in with your thoughts. And uh, chime in with your thoughts about this particular hour which, where we began with the purpose of existence and what one has to do versus what the world does and what, you know, and, and what happens to people who that do what the world says uh, versus those who go with the Lord. And who don't rebel. <laughs> the world says you rebel, but you don't rebel. Those people not allowed to preach in uh, Satan's church. Those uh, who are not allowed to be on the Salem airwaves or the whatever it is. Salem, this, whatever, the that's the big one now. Um, and with that, I shalom, shalom. And, you know, stay right there. WWCR, the last bastion of truth. And we'll see you in a few. Zef Daniel. Sayonara until the next hour.